see where um, it says here, message to be announced. Well, um, I have to say, that was decided this morning at 8.30. <laughs> um, it's called perfection. Um, and I think this is where I'm supposed to tell a little joke, so I'll try. <laughs> um, there was a little birthday party this weekend and uh, for a uh, two-year-old. And so lots of little kids running around and lots of big people running around going, oh my God, I hope they just behave. I hope they don't puke. I hope they, you know, all of that. And uh, after the par party was wonderful, and after the party's over, the mom and dad said to the little kid, oh, you were such a good boy today. You did such a good job opening your presents and sharing your new toys. And he said, I know. I mean, I know. Wouldn't life be so simple to be able to do that? I know. I'm perfect. Don't worry about it. <laughs> I can do it. So, but he was a perfect little boy. So, and they all are. So, um, the law of the Lord is perfect. Can you imagine? I mean, how wonderful is that? That. There is something out there that's absolutely 100% perfect that we get to look forward to. Life goes on day and night, night and day. Each of us running into, each of them running into one another. It's perfect. It's just seamless. This is the same in our daily lives. One runs into the other. Nothing changes, right? Or does it? Mm -hmm. Nothing is perfect. Do we ever take the time to just slow down and stop and think what is happening in our lives and around us? Do we ever do that? It's hard when you're in the daily grind. Get up, fix breakfast, make the coffee, do the lunches, go to work. Oh, wait, I forgot to send the kids off to school. Go back, send the kids off to school, get them out of bed. <coughs> You know, oh wait, uh, so-and-so has cheering practice in Bucksport. So-and-so has soccer game in Ellsworth. Oh my gosh, how am I going to get him there? My husband's working till 7. That's not going to happen. Okay, so then you're scrambling to find, you know, um, somebody that can take this kid here and that kid there and pick him up at 6. And then, oh, now i got to get home and get dinner. And, oh my gosh, I forgot to go to the doctors, you know. You don't take care of yourself. So everything else is going to fall apart. So nothing's perfect. Or is it? Do we show love when we need to? Do we hate? Do we forgive? Do we have awe and wonder like a little child at what blessings the Lord gives us every day? Do we? Sometimes I don't, and then sometimes I stop and go, oh my God, look at that. That is amazing. Well, we may be not feeling, sorry. <laughs> maybe we don't do that, and maybe we do do it just occasionally but maybe we should do it more often. So on those times that we do do it, we need to stop and praise God. We may, not have, we may have lost somebody, but we love them dearly. We had that chance to do that. We had them in our lives to love, and they were there for a long time. So there is the sadness and there is the happiness. So that's perfect. Not always good all the time, but it's perfect. Do we dread the upcoming winter? I do. <clears throat> but we need to praise God for the beautiful fall colors that we have and the first fallen snow. Is it perfect? Yeah. Goes this way, goes that way. The balance goes back and forth. Are we angry and hateful? Sometimes I am. Sometimes more than not that I'd like to admit. We need to seek God to help us to understand and forgive and love. 
Is the balance still there? Hopefully. Some days not, some days yeah. It's perfect. The law of the Lord is perfect. But we're not, and he knows that about us. After all, he created us. We are his design. We are his legacy. That's kind of scary. When you think about, oh, what am I doing? I shouldn't be doing this. No, I can't do this. Wow, look what I just did. That is so awesome. Yes, thank you, God. So, is it perfect? Hopefully, yeah. We have children like he has us. We have our own children, most of us. And how many in this room has a perfect child after the age of 12 months? <laughs> okay. Well, but we love them anyways, no matter if they're perfect or not. I mean, we're supposed to. It's our job. That's what God gave us. He gave us the job to take care of his gift to us, our children. And we do that with love, with anger, with firmness, hopefully with a little bit of structure and then a whole lot more love. So, and do we love them all the same? We try to. I think we do. God loves us all the same. We're all going to make mistakes. <coughs> we're not perfect. He's perfect, but we're not perfect. But the perfect part of the whole relationship is that he loves us all the same, no matter how much we do that's not okay and how much we do that is okay. So in the end, does he love us? Yeah, he does. The law of the Lord is perfect. And there was one part in Psalms that I really liked to kind of fit in this. Because we're not perfect people and because we are of his design, by your teachings, Lord, I am warned by obeying them. I am greatly rewarded. Not, none of us all know our faults. Forgive me for when I sin without knowing it. Don't let me do wrong on purpose, Lord, or let me sin, let, or let sin have control over my life. Then I will be innocent and not guilty and some terrible, of some terrible fault. Let the words of my mouth and the thoughts of my prayers be pleasing to you, Lord, because you are my mighty rock and my protector. The Lord of the God is perfect. He's there for us. He picks us up when we need it. Sometimes we don't know we're picked up. Sometimes it takes us a little longer to feel his arms around us, but they are. And he's perfect. And as his children, we need to draw ourselves closer to God. By doing this, we are more mature in our knowledge of his expectations. And we can then go forth each and every day and deliver his message of love, peace, and understanding in the world. We will all make mistakes, but with the love of the Father, we will walk in his light for all humanity. Make sure you feed yourselves. Be perfect. The end. <laughs> <laughs> and now we're going to have Holy Communion. <clears throat> Hazel. seemed good to have a few minutes just to sit down and <laughs> get my thoughts about me just a little tiny bit, Brenda. Your message helped a lot. And kind of let me do this. For those who don't know, I was leading worship in Millbridge this morning. Theirs is at 9. And uh, theirs also, I had to do Holy Communion because that pastor's prayed. <coughs> already blessed elements this morning for us to use here, and he blessed elements for me to use over there, and their style is different than your style. <laughs> but that's okay. 
it's wonderful. It's it's good to see new and different faces, and it, um, but it's comforting to come in here because this is like home now. And before I start with Holy Communion, I just have two messages from the boss, not God, but Bernie. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he just wanted me to remind you that if anyone is interested in, in taking a basic lay speaking course to speak to him, he would like, if anyone's interested, he would like to get one set up for before we go away uh, at the end of the year. So um, hopefully he will be here next week. I know I said that last week, but it wasn't a good week for him. He's doing better. Today he was doing better than he has each day before, and he just hasn't learned uh, the act of being patient yet. <laughs> we all struggle with it. Um, but he has not been outside the house except to walk back and forth in the driveway. That's not like him. And the other thing he wanted me to remind you of is that on um, Monday, October 13th, that's the holiday um, weekend on Monday, it is uh, Northern Main District's Bishop's Day when Bishop Davidar will be in the area. He's going to be at Faith Church in Columbia. And everyone is welcome, clergy and laity alike. There, uh, it starts at 10, registration starts at 9.30. There'll be little light refreshments to have there. And um, he meets with the clergy in the morning and the laity meets with uh, I think the person who's in charge of lay speaking ministries, uh, who's another pastor. Um, in the afternoon, the bishop meets with both clergy and laity, and it ends with a communion service. So, you want me to remind you of those things. Holy Communion, I apologize to whoever had things all set up, but Bernie reinforced to use the elements that he blessed this morning, especially today, because this is Worldwide Communion Sunday. Not that we shouldn't be aware of the, the blessings uh, on the, the bread and the juice to make for them, make for us the body and blood of Christ. Um, but I brought the things that he had blessed earlier. So I would ask you to turn in your hymnals to page 15. I know we usually start on page 12. This will be a little bit different. <clears throat> and we'll start down at the bottom of the page for the Great Thanksgiving. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. At the top of page 16, where it says, Pastor gives appropriate comments, I found, and many of you probably did too, um, in the um, devotional, Daily Bread devotional, there was one called The Power of Ritual, and I felt like that really fit with Worldwide Communion Sunday today. I want to read just a little bit of that. When I was growing up, one of the rules in our house says that we were not allowed to go to bed angry. All our fights and disagreements had to be resolved. <clears throat> the companion to that rule was this bedtime ritual. Mom and Dad would say to my brother and me, Good night, I love you. And we would respond, Good night, I love you too. The value of this family ritual has recently been impressed on me. As my mother lay in a hospice bed dying of lung cancer, she became less and less responsive. But each night when I left her bedside, I would say, I love you, Mom. And though she could say little else, she would respond, I love you too. Growing up, I had no idea what a gift this ritual would be to me so many years later. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might. Hear these 
words of scripture from 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 23 to 26. For I received from the Lord what I also handed on to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night when he was betrayed, took a loaf of bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he also took the cup. After supper, and said, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. And so, in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ is dying. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. All honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And would you join me in reciting the Lord's Prayer? Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day. 